Director of the Capital District Library Council. Um, I'd like to welcome you to our first online tour. Um, our original plan was to have 20 face-to-face -to -face tours in 2020. And then we all know what happened. <laughs> so we're all uh, getting to meet and see each other via computer screens. Um, so I would like to thank our member services librarian, Amy Wren, for scrambling and working with all of the potential tours um, to get many of them online. Um, and I'd also like to thank, thank Anne at Hudson Valley Community College for being our guinea pig and um, being the first virtual tour that we're offering. Um, we are scheduling other online tours throughout the rest of the year. Um, they are being added to our website and also our CE calendar. Um, so I just wanted again to welcome you and thank you. And I'm gonna hand it over to Amy Wren, our member services librarian. Thank you, Kathy. Um, as Kathy said, I'm Amy Wren. I'm the Member Services Librarian at the Capital District Library Council. Um, today we're going to be touring the Dwight Marvin Library at Hudson Valley Community College. Anne Rappaport from Hudson Valley will be guiding us on this tour. During and after the tour, you can submit any questions you may have through the Q&A fun uh, function on Zoom. You also have access to the chat function, but we prefer that questions go through Q&A to make sure we don't miss any. After Anne finishes the tour, she'll answer any questions that you may have. So Anne, if you'd like to get started. Sure, so I'm gonna share my screen here so you guys can see our video. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, play the video and then I'll stop, talk about what you guys are seeing um, and we'll continue on like that. So what you're looking at right now is the entrance to uh, the Marvin, the Dwight Marvin Library or the Marvin Library Learning Commons. Um, as we call it now, it was renamed and kind of restyled uh, back in 2012 to include not just the library, but a couple of other uh, learning centers and learning assistance centers um, that you'll see later on in the video. Um, the shot that you're seeing right now is of our first floor. The majority of our first floor is what we call um, a yellow zone. So it means not really for group work, but you can have a small conversation. Um, the entire library is split up into these, uh, into these zones. Um, the bookshelves that are right here is our um, graphic novel collection, our children's lit, and some of our popular reading. Um, these these uh, big green comfy chairs are really popular with students. Um, you know, they love to hang out with their, well, they used to love to hang out over here um, and kind of congregate between classes. Um, along the wall, you'll see that there are our librarian offices. Um, and then over on the other side of one of those bookshelves is where I'm sitting right now um, at my desk. And as you turn around, you'll see this view, um, which is our atrium and cafe. On the wall, uh, you can see um, what was supposed to be our 50th anniversary um, exhibition. It was um, artwork that was inspired by the library or values that the library reflects um, that was supposed to open at the uh, beginning of April. Unfortunately, uh, we had everything up and ready, but we could not have our grand opening. But we do have um, all of the pieces that were submitted by alumni, faculty, uh, staff, and students up on our social media, so you can check that out. Also in the atrium area are our periodicals and magazines. All right, and of course the cafe, you know, the student favorite, <laughs> and more of our exhibit. All right, so now we're down um, on the lower level of the library. Um, there's a couple, a few different components to the lower level. What you're looking at right now is uh, more study space, which is a yellow zone, as well as some more uh, staff offices. And now we here we have some of just some of our study um, study carols as well as some of our study rooms. The study room you're looking at right now is actually brand new. It used to be our IMC, um, our media center, but that has since um, kind of been dispersed. Some of the resources that were there went to the, our first floor service desk. Um, others are um, around the building, and we turned that space into a study room. There along the walls are the Mac computers highly coveted for the students <laughs> to get one of those. 
And here we have more of our study rooms. We do have quite a few because they are so popular, usually. <laughs> it's a little bit of a ghost town right now. What you're seeing right now, again, on the lower level is our computer learning center and computer lab. So tons of computers for students to work, um, as well as printers, copiers. All right, and then we're at the CLC Help Desk, which is the first one of our um, learning center um, or learning commons um, components to, to the building. Um, here, students can go to get help with their laptops, with um, you know, there are any sort of software, any um, Wi-Fi help, passwords, things like that, um, that is usually manned by a number of folks, but obviously they are not there right now. Oh, I should mention that the CLC does usually have um, workshops, and I believe they are continuing to do those workshops online, you know, how to make the most out of your PowerPoint, how to format your Word documents, things like that. Unfortunately, you can't see too much, but right now we are in um, the second of three components of the learning assistance centers. And this is just called, this part is just the learning assistance center. You can see there's kind of a fuzzy sign uh, that says that. And there um, students can get help with um, not just tutoring, you know, your basic biology, Spanish, history, whatever it may be, by both um, regular tutors, but also peer tutors. Um, and then on the other side of that sign is another sign that says um, CASP or Collegiate Academic Support System. And this is an offshoot of our college's center for engagement. And the CASP coach that's in there can do a variety of things. Students, as long as that door is open, students can really walk in and they can get help with budgeting, with tax forms, with you know finding resources in the community. Um, there's quite a few other coaches around campus. But we do have one. Her name is Chloe, and she is situated in, in the Learning Commons with us, which we really, really love. Um, right there, uh, that, desk usually, uh, that desk usually sits um, our friend Aaron Nooney. He's a learning strategy specialist, so students can get help with things like textbook reading, uh, note-taking, things like that. And usually they set up um, an appointment with him, and they can talk, sit down and talk about those skills. He also is in charge of our peer tutors. All right, and this really is, you know, when you ask people why they come, to, one of the re biggest reasons they come to the library, it's the math center. Um, you can make it out in this video that there's little red flags on the table and students uh, come into the math center and if they need help with a certain class, they go and they find the table that their class is sitting at. So it'll, it has, these signs will say, you know, Math 110 or Algebra, Calculus, whatever it may be. When they need help, they'll raise up those little flags. And um, one of our math tutors, um, faculty math um, professors will come over and they'll help them with it. Then they put the little flag down. And when they need help again, they will, they'll raise the flag up. Um, it's a very efficient system. And usually this is filled. At the end of the day, on Fridays, we have to like kick people out of here. They love it. All right. And this is our uh, flexible learning space, our FLS, the last uh, room that we're gonna see on the uh, lower level of the library. Typically, we do have library instruction in here. Um, I think, you know, with COVID and everything, this is actually going to become a Zoom station. So if students are on campus and they need to make it to a Zoom class, and they don't have a laptop or anything, they can come here and they can log on. All right, so now we're on the, uh, the second floor of the library. As you can see, we're looking down at the cafe and the atrium where our exhibit was. All right, so we are in the Writing and Research Center. Um, and in this space, our librarians work with our writing specialists to, um, to help students in a way that makes sense and in an order that makes sense. You know, they can come here and right on the left, you're going to see is our reference desk and they can get help with their assignments and with their papers and, you know, talk to a librarian when, when they are here. And then over on the right, you see that desk there is for one of, our, one of our many writing specialists. And so once students have gotten help, from their librarian, they can go over and they can get help from a writing specialist with um, what they're working on. All right, I put this in here because I couldn't resist. It doesn't look quite as good on the computer, but this is um, 
part of our silent study. You can see there's a little red tag on the table. That means that they're not, they're not supposed to talk or do any group work. And behind them are these beautiful stained glass windows, which originally came from the college's chapel. All right, now we're in the stacks. Um, don't find students over here quite as much, um, but we um, are at this point discouraging people from going in there and browsing. Here is the multi-purpose room. Uh, we do quite a few different things here. We'll do our college forum instruction. So we have a first year experience class and typically that first year experience class will take one one class period and they'll come to the library and we'll do a presentation with them, we'll do tours with them, and that usually happens here in the NPR. Um, we also do events in this room. Uh, back in February when it was also allowed, we actually had a food demonstration based on an exhibit that we had, a traveling exhibit from the National Library of Medicine that we had down um, in the atrium. All right, and this is behind the stacks that we saw before. Um, this is more silent study for our students. And there, um, it's a little fuzzy, I apologize, uh, but that is where the NPR was, where we just were. All right, let me exit out of this. Stop sharing. All right, does anyone have any questions or want me to go over something again? And take a look in the Q and A, and then in the chat. Yeah, just a reminder, if anyone has any questions, you can put them in the question and answer section. I know I mentioned a few of the ways that we are, um, we're thinking about adapting um, for our opening in the fall. Um, we will have a few students on campus. Um, you know, very few classes will be here. The ones that need to be like labs and things like that are going to be held, um, but the majority of classes will be held online, but the library will, will be open for students whether they have their online classes or not. Right. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you see Kate has a question. You have a beautiful right. library. Oh, you see it? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. We, thank you. We do. We love our library here. Um, how are we going to handle um, the computer lab with cleaning? Um, so uh, right now, it we have our um, the college's physical plant is in charge of cleaning. Um, we did have a um, a COVID, I guess I would call it scare. Uh, the, uh, last week we had someone who, um, I was talking actually to Amy about our, um, our pretty intense checkpoint to be able to get into, um, to get into the building. You have to get your temperature taken, fill out a survey and get a nice little wristband every day that you're on campus. And one of our employees got sent home with a slight fever. Um, she did, she got tested and she tested negative. So we don't have to worry. But in the meantime, while we were, um, you know, while we were waiting, the building was actually shut down for three days and our physical plant came in and they totally, um, they deep cleaned everything. And every day um, when we leave, um, they come in and they clean everything. Right now, um, we do have, um, you know, added um, Clorox wipes, um, hand sanitizer and things like that. But we are not really expecting to have really too many people in the building. I think we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be really limiting the amount of people and everyone's gonna uh, register when they come in. I believe we're planning on using, uh, I think, uh, LibCal's um, capability for that. Sorry, that felt very, <laughs> very roundabout, but I hope I answered your question. <laughs> I have a question, <laughs> Susan here. Do you happen to know um, what the, like, what the temperature is or the person gets sent home. I just asked this because I know in a couple of places 
there are people who like their natural temperature is elevated and they're not sure they're like worried about closing down their workplace because uh, I you know, don't know um, <laughs> if there is you know a particular temperature where people are being sent home um, yeah you know I don't know I guess that the public safety officers who are um, doing the checkpoint I'm sure no, um, but I don't. Um, I know in some cases, you know, just from my personal experience, um, being out in in our new world, sometimes, you know, I'll have my temperature taken when I go somewhere. They're like, oh, you're hot. You have to take off your jacket and like walk around and then come back. <laughs> I don't know if they're doing that here, though. <laughs> All right. It looks like there's some more questions in the chat. Um, Will we be offering um, library classes and research assistance online? Okay, yes, so absolutely, and we're still doing that. Um, we do have the 24-hour, uh, 24-7 li librarian chat, and our librarians have been offering regular uh, reference help through there. Um, we do have a research appointment system, which is still going on, um, and students can uh, connect with a librarian if they request an appointment through Zoom. And through Zoom is probably also how we'll be doing our college forum instruction as well. I think that's everything, um, unless I'm missing someone. No, I just have, I have another question because I know this is an issue with, um, you know, I'm sure it's an issue with Hudson Dell. I know it's an issue with the CUNY system because a lot of the students don't have robust internet access at home. So I don't know if the library is involved with that in any way to like get the students um, internet we access. Are, we are not. Um, from really, from what I've seen, the administration um, has encouraged people to reach out if they, you know, if they need a computer to our IT, um, to our IT center um, and they, let students know about Spectrum's free, I think it was like 60 or 90 day internet. Um, other than that, I don't know too much about the college's efforts, um, but the, but we've been discussing a lot as a staff, you know, the access that the library provides and how we're gonna make sure that, you know, students who have, who maybe don't have um, the greatest internet access and the fact that they usually use the library, how are we gonna supplement that? And that's one of the ideas for that is like our Zoom station that I talked about in the FLS is, you know, having specific areas where students can use the, um, you know, utilize the internet um, and still be safe. Oh, another question. The math lab looks amazing. Do all math professors have a schedule to attend? Um, so yeah, the, um, and I should, I should have explained this. So the, the Learning Commons building um, is made up of two main entities, the library and the Learning Assistance Center. We have our own director um, here at the library, Brenda Hazard, which I know most of you probably, who most of you probably know. And then the Learning Assistance Center has its own director, her uh, lovely woman named Marcy P Prendergast. And she um, makes up the schedule for all of the math professors and the faculty who are down there. So they do have a set schedule of you know, when they're there and when they're helping. Oh, there was something there, but it disappeared. <laughs> All right. No, so the IT department is not in our building. Um, I think they're kind of across campus um, in what I believe is Higby Hall. Um, and even though we don't have um, IT here in the building, we have the Computer Learning Center which will help students with kind of troubleshooting things, not necessarily access. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, um, any other questions or things that you guys are wondering about? No, oh, I, I just want to um, thank you, Anne. Uh, um, I know it can be challenging to show around a building um, online, 
but you really, you did a really nice job of showing not just the library, but everything that building encompasses. Do we have anything else that people want to ask or Amy, did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. I think um, you covered everything and I think uh, even though it was virtual, it worked out really well and we still got to see so. Brian, which was nice. And um, last year we, um, CDLC hosted an event in the um, multi-purpose room at Hudson Valley some library and it's a beautiful space so I'm hoping that we can come there again <laughs> someday yeah face-to-face -face event there yeah. oh, maybe next time I can you know I'll hold my phone and bring you guys around <laughs> okay well thank you everyone for attending uh, thank you for uh, coming to our first virtual 20 and 2020 and you can keep an eye out for notifications for other ones to come throughout the rest of the year. Thank you so much to you guys for hosting. Um, this is definitely uh, something, something that I had to look forward to. <laughs> Thank this you. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. Nice job. All right. We'll see everybody soon. Mm -hmm.